For more than 30 years, The Simpsons has skewered every major player in the pop culture landscape, including Marvel. While some of these superhero jokes are obvious, others aren't quite as easy to spot. Here are some Marvel references in The Simpsons that you might have missed. One of the earliest and best Crusading Lisa episodes of The Simpsons is Lisa vs. Malibu Stacy. In this classic episode, the sensitive, political, and staunchly feminist middle Simpson child strikes back against the manufacturers of a Barbie-like doll called Malibu Stacy. In the past, Lisa was a huge Malibu Stacy fan and collector, but she becomes deeply offended by a new talking version of the doll. It has a voice chip that delivers an assortment of stereotypical phrases such as, let's make cookies for the boys, and don't ask me, I'm just a girl. <laughs> Malibu Stacy also utters this line which further pushes Lisa to the edge. Let's buy makeup so the boys will like at this point, Lisa rants to the other girls about her issues with the doll. A confused classmate admits there's something wrong with her Malibu Stacy. My spidey sense is tingling. Anybody call for a web slinger? This, of course, is one of the phrases used by the Marvel Comics character Spider-Man. It's also a much more obscure reference to an early 90s activist group called the Barbie Liberation Organization. This group secretly replaced the voice chips of Mattel's teen talk Barbie, which said things like, Math class is tough, in favor of sayings from talking G.I. Joe action figures like, Eat lead, Cobra, and plenty of other bad battle-ready expressions. The Simpsons has always been loaded with sight gags that only pop onto the screen for a second or two, making plenty of these jokes easy to miss. And whenever The Simpsons family heads to a movie, viewers should keep a sharp eye on the marquee outside the theater because there are likely to be a few clever takes on popular film titles. Of course, Marvel has had more than a few of its comic book characters and movie titles twisted by the writers of The Simpsons. For instance, in the 2004 episode Episode, the Ziff Who Came to Dinner, there's a brief shot of the theater's marquee, offering such era-specific fake films as The Fashion of the Christ, Eating Nemo, and The Unwatchable Hulk. The last one is a sly reference to the 2003 Hulk film, the first appearance of the angry green guy on the big screen, which was far from a hit with the critics. Similarly, in a 2018 episode, The Simpsons go to see a film at the Capital City Googleplex, along with titles like Transformers, Fatigue, and the Lego Get Out movie. There's a film called Marvel Letters to the Editor, a dig at how the company has used seemingly everything from its comics canon as movie fodder. After watching a Marvel film, The Simpsons stick around for the credits, which mention that Mark Ruffalo, who plays the Hulk, has an anger coach, and that Stan Lee was created by Stan Lee's parents. However, as we all know, Marvel movies are never really over when the credits start to roll, and this animated parody is no exception. The Simpsons make fun of the MCU's love of mid-credit and post-credit sequences that reveal huge plot twists and wet audience appetites by setting up future movies. Marvel Letters to the Editor has a mid-credit scene that brings a beloved character back from the dead. In this case, it's Peter Parker's Uncle Ben, only now he's unspeakably evil and revealed as the film's villain. After that, there's yet another sequence which sets things up for an Avengers-like movie featuring the Assemblers. Who the hell are you? I'm assembling a team of the best team assemblers in the world. And I want you to help me put together that team. Plenty of Marvel movies have been origin stories, such as the 2002 Spider-Man, which tells how Peter Parker became a web-slinging, wall-crawling superhero, and many elements of this Sam Raimi film are gently parodied in Simple Simpson, a 2004 episode which serves as the origin story for Homer's short-lived superhero identity, Pie Man. It all starts at the county fair, where Lisa enters a table-setting contest. Unfortunately, the judge, an obnoxious rich Texan, thinks her project stinks like the south end of a northbound mule, and goes about humiliating her for his own entertainment. When Homer sees his daughter being mocked by the judge, he becomes angry to the point of violence. However, remembering that Chief Wiggum told him he'd go to jail if he committed another felony assault, Homer takes another path 
to vengeance. He steals items from various fair booths and fashions them into a crude superhero outfit, announcing himself as Pie Man, and avenges Lisa by throwing a pie in the rich Texan's face. Before Homer can right any other wrongs, he needs a proper pie costume. The episode then launches into a montage of Homer drawing up ideas for his Pie Man look, then dutifully sewing one together that doesn't look quite as good as what he'd probably imagined. The whole thing is reminiscent of Peter Parker creating his own less than stellar first outfit in Spider-Man. This Simpsons episode has another big reference to the film with an upside down kiss between Pie Man and Marge. up your nose, but I feel like I'm staring into your soul. Mona Lisa from 2006 is a truly classic episode of The Simpsons in that it gives viewers its signature mix of references to highbrow interests and accessible pop culture. Renowned authors Jonathan Franzen, Michael Chabon, Tom Wolfe and Gore Vidal make voice cameos while there's also an extended sequence involving a side character from the Spider-Verse, specifically as he was presented in the first trilogy of Spider-Man movies. During the episode, Lisa discovers that Mo the bartender is a dark, sad, everyman poet in the vein of Charles Bukowski, and she sends his work to the literary journal American Poetry Perspectives. And who happens to be the magazine's editor? It's none other than J. Jonah Jameson, who's apparently moved on from his job at the helm of the Daily Bugle. I need photos! Photos of Spider-Man! This is a poetry journal! Okay, then poems about Spider-Man! Jameson is voiced by Academy Award-winning character actor J.K. Simmons, who portrayed him in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, as well as Spider-Man Far From Home. References to comic books and its surrounding culture have been part of The Simpsons for decades, even back when collecting comics was a relatively niche pastime. Bart Simpson and Milhouse regularly visit Springfield's comic source, the Android's Dungeon and Baseball Card Shop, run by the usually arrogant and dismissive comic book guy. However, in the episode, Beware My Cheating Bart, two of Springfield's young residents wind up at the store not for comic books, but for a romantic refuge. The trouble starts when neighborhood bully Jimbo forces Bart to escort his girlfriend Shauna to places he doesn't want to go, and the two develop romantic feelings for each other. After they're caught kissing at the public pool, Bart and Shauna hide from Jimbo and his bully friends at the Android's dungeon. Comic book guy greets them with words that would make any Thor fan feel at ease. Think of this as your personal Asgard, and I, the all-seeing Heimdall, guardian of the gate. That's three references to Norse mythology in one sentence, but since this is Comic Book Guy, it's safe to assume that he's referring to the Norse mythology-inspired world of Marvel's Thor. But wait, there's one more Marvel reference in this scene. After Shauna makes fun of Comic Book Guy's weight, he alerts Jimbo and the bullies where she's hiding. Shauna then starts a flame war with him, and he drops a classic Marvel line. Oh, flame on! Even casual fans will recognize flame on as the catchphrase of the human torch from the Fantastic Four. In Bart, the bad guy, Bart becomes the most powerful person in Springfield after he watches an advanced copy of the superhero saga Vindicators Crystal War II Resurgence. He was able to view it on a laptop that he lifted from a drunk, passed out star of the film. Now Bart can get anything he wants by threatening to reveal spoilers for the highly anticipated blockbuster. Clearly the film is a send-up of Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, complete with a powerful space titan and emotional cliffhanger. The episode starts with just about everyone in Springfield watching the first Crystal War movie. In the film's final climactic scene, the Thanos-like Chinos comes into possession of the Doomsday app which he used to turn the protagonists into crystals that shatter. Like Infinity War, the Crystal War films are overloaded with superheroes, most of which have easily identifiable Marvel counterparts. For instance, there's the Simpsons version of Iron Man, Magnesium Man, who is always ready with a witty bit of dialogue. Another main character in the episode is Airshot. He's clearly based on Hawkeye, except instead of being an expert archer, he's mastered the pump-action air gun. <laughs> Yes, Airshot, pump that air gun! Five pumps! 
Think of the pressure! The episode is packed with visual references to recent Marvel movies, but it also throws in a musical nod to one of their films from the previous decade. During one scene, we hear the song People Get Up and Drive Your Funky Soul while Bart walks down the hall of his school. This is the same James Brown tune that accompanies Peter Parker's infamous strut down the street in 2007's Spider-Man 3. In Elementary School Musical, an episode from 2010, Krusty the Clown achieves the unthinkable. He wins the Nobel Peace Prize. However, it's all just a ruse to get him onto a plane, which lands at The Hague where Krusty is arrested and is set to be tried by the International Court of Justice. He'll be released only if someone can find proof that Krusty has contributed significantly to culture in any way. Homer and Bart scramble to locate some kind of evidence of Krusty's artistic importance. After scouring the internet, they find a MyTube clip of the PBS educational show The Electric Company. The Simpsons version of the show features a character who seems to be inspired by Easy Reader, who was portrayed on the real electric company by a young Morgan Freeman. Predictably, Krusty's appearance on the show goes completely haywire. Gotta hide me. I slept with the lighting director's wife and... Oh! This is a deep Marvel cut, as a low-budget version of Spider-Man really did appear on the electric company in the 70s. The 2017 episode Springfield Splendor alludes to the title of the classic indie comic American Splendor, but on the whole, the episode satirizes all kinds of comic books and other properties that have spawned in recent years. After Lisa writes a confessional autobiographical novel called Sad Girl as Art Therapy, Comic Book Guy publishes it without her permission. You published my private art therapy as a comic book? Um, actually, it's a graphic novel. The distinctions are threefold. Shut up! However, the graphic novel becomes a hit, and Lisa is invited to be on a panel at Comic-Con. Like real-life pop culture conventions, attendees dress as their favorite comic book and movie characters. And there's a brief shot of a fan wearing a cheap ramshackle tree costume. Clearly, he's attempting to cosplay as Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. Also, it looks like Stan Lee is in the background. Later in the episode, Lisa's sad girl gets turned into a musical, which is ostensibly a send-up of the graphic novel to Broadway success of Alison Bechdel's Fun Home. Also, the score for the Sad Girl Live Experience is the same score from the ill-fated Broadway musical Spider-Man – Turn Off the Dark. The late Stan Lee was basically synonymous with Marvel Comics. He was a lifelong cheerleader for the company where he helped invent dozens of legendary characters. It was only fitting that he turned in an extended cameo in a Simpsons episode that finds Bart becoming a major player in the comics business. After Bart visits the Android's dungeon to get comic book guy's opinion on a character he created, Lee offers up his own expert critique. When Bart returns to the store later, he notices that Lee is still hanging around. Comic Comic Book Guy posits that Lee's mind is no longer in mint condition, which is illustrated when he's trying to convince a customer that an action figure of the Thing can fit into a much smaller Batmobile. Later in the episode, Homer becomes enraged after falling into an inflatable pool filled with green paint and is mistaken for the Hulk. When Lee sees this happening, he can't help but get involved. I'm the Hulk! <laughs> Oh, please, you couldn't even change into Bill Bixby. Twelve seasons later, a vision of Lee tries to convince comic book guy to pursue the girl he loves. When he asks for help, Lee declines and says, I can only watch, I cannot interfere. That's a subtle nod to a bit of dialogue spoken by the Watchers, the Marvel characters seen in Guardians of the Galaxy and Fantastic Four. However, when comic book guy starts to lose his nerve, the vision of Lee returns to lend a helping hand. Come on, Nudnik, ask her out. You're interfering. Hey, I'm 90 years old. I can do what I want. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about The Simpsons are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.